Hello there. Let's continue with chapter 14, Chemical Equilibrium. I'm uh, doing a new recording since we have uh, technical problems. Some of you were not able to either see the video or to hear the video. Some of you didn't even see anything at all. I was able to see it here on my side and also while I was recording it. The, this uh, Blackboard Collaborate uh, was giving me uh, a lot of trouble during recording, so I waste of uh, uh, a lot of time. And I decided to change the format. Now I'm going to use uh, Zoom technology, and also I'm using uh, one notes. I hope this uh, works better. So I'm redoing this part of the of the lecture. I'm not using. I'm not going to use Blackboard Collaborate, Collaborate anymore to record my lectures. Here we are. I want to show you this piece of paper. Um, this is on the Blackboard document. It is called the uh, equations and constants. You can go there, download it and print it out and have it next to you every time you come to lecture. Because we are going to use it many times. It contains all the formulas we are going to use during the semester. <clears throat> all chapters are here. All chapter formulas are here. This is a important tool. I collect them, all of them, and put it here on this piece of paper in this document for you. So it will be easier for you to find the equations and to use them while we are solving problems. <clears throat> or while you are doing the test or quiz. <clears throat> uh, so again, go to Blackboard, Documents, and download and print this document, have it next to you all the time. Same thing you will need a scientific calculator. Every time you come, you come to the lecture, you must bring your scientific calculator in good working conditions. Every time we do a calculation, you need to do the calculation at the same time. So you stop the video, do, cal do your calculation, and then you continue and uh, compare uh, results. Sometimes I leave it open. I leave the, the, the calculation open to you to do it. I don't do it here because I want you to do it. Sometimes I just show the answer. So you compare your result with my result. Most of the times, uh, you will get the right answer. Sometimes you will not. So you stop the recording and try again and fix the problem first. You should learn how to use your own calculator. Every calculator model and brand have uh, some variations on how to use the functions. So learn how to use your calculator. Having said that, let's jump into the PowerPoint presentation. This is also on the Blackboard. Bring it up on your screen so you follow my lecture with your power, PowerPoint presentation on your screen. 
I will make notes, notes on it. Um, so you can follow the sequence of the topics I'm doing here. Okay, so this is chapter 14, chemical equilibrium. And I'm going to start with the definition of chemical equilibrium. Remember, I'm, I'm doing this uh, recording uh, again. The previous version I did with, with Blackboard Collaborate didn't work all the time. It didn't have a consistent performance. So you had to do a game. This definition is the one that I like to use, definition of chemical equilibrium in my lectures. I found this one as the best def definition that describes properly what is the meaning of chemical equilibrium. And I spent a good, amount of time analyzing the meaning of every word of the definition. So let's go through this. I want to make sure you fully understand the meaning of chemical equilibrium because general chemistry too Chem 12 course is all about chemical equilibrium. You will see applications of this CAM set in all chapters of this course. From chapter one to the last chapter, we'll find different ways to apply the the chemical equilibrium comes it, and also different ways to calculate the equilibrium constant. It's really important that we, we get this right the first time. So let's start saying that chemical equilibrium is the state of dynamic equilibrium. What is that? What is the meaning of that? Dynamic equilibrium means the equilibrium works all the time. The opposite of dynamic is static something that doesn't move. Equilibrium is a dynamic state of the system. It's always working, never stop, always working. And that is possible because of course it occurs in a closed system here. So now we have a 
dynamic equilibrium that occurs in a closed system. What is that? What is a closed system? Let me stop here the definition and I go, I will go back to one important concept you learn in Chem 11. Systems. So I need, I need to get this out of the way. What is a system? And then we come back to this equilibrium definition. There are different types of systems. to stop here this uh, camera so I will show you here oh, this one okay So let's define system in science chemistry. We define system as a set of parts working together to do a work function. So the system is a set of parts working together to fulfill a mission, a function, to do a work. So anything can be a system and you define what is the limit of the system. What are the limit, limits of your system? Outside of this border, this is the border of the system. Outside the border, we have surroundings. But we can classify the system in three different types of systems. We have open, open systems. So systems can be open if they exchange matter.
aren't energy with surroundings. That means the matter can enter and can get out of the open system. Energy can get in and energy can get out of the open system. If a system allows mat the flow of matter and energy, that means that system is open. Biological systems are open systems. An open test tube, you have a test tube with a chemical there. It could be just water. And you, and you call this the system. This can be your system. Remember, you define the borders of the system. You can say, I want to study this system here. But you have a beaker with chemical, that's your system but you have a soda can, that's your system, but you have a room filled with a lot of stuff, that's your system. You define the surround, the, the borders of, the, of your system. So we have a open test tube with water. That's an open system. And it's not called open just because here it's open, doesn't have a stopper. It has no stopper, it's open to atmospheric um, environment. But also it is open because allows the matter to go in or out. So you can add more water. You can add more water. Or you can take water. Just leave it there, put it on a, on a test tube rack, leave it for a couple hours, you will see the, some water will evaporate. It's a vapor, right? So the water can get in and water can get out. What about energy? Same thing. You can heat this up, put on a Bunsen burner. You can heat this up or you can cool it down. So energy, when you heat this up, energy in the system goes up. If you cool this down, put on a, an ice bath, so the temperature inside of the system goes down, it loses energy because the energy escapes. Is transferred by thermal contact to the ice bath. So the internal energy will be will go down while the energy of the cold bath will go up, will warm up. So this is an example of a open system. That's the first class of systems. The second type of system is, clo is called closed system. In a closed system, matter is constant. Matter cannot go out matter cannot go in. However, energy 
can be transferred. Energy can get out. You put this system in a, in, in a lower temperature environment, so it will lose energy. You put a, you, like, like for example, a closed Sora can. You put it on the on the fridge and it cools down inside. You put it, leave it outside under the sun, it will warm up. So energy gets in, absorbs heat. So you see there's a flow of energy, but not matter. That is a closed system. Once you open the soda the first time, if you open the soda the first time, now it will become an open system. Not because you open it, because it allows the flow of matter and energy in both directions here, in both directions. Here, energy only flows in both directions, but no matter. This equilibrium occurs in a closed system. That's a condition. The third type of systems is the insulated. Isolated systems doesn't allow the transfer of matter or energy to surroundings. All matter and energy is contained in the system. We don't know any of those systems. We don't know such system here in our And this portion of the universe we live. So basically, we said the only isolated system is the universe, where all the matter is contained inside. That's the only isolated system. Under the definition of our system, because we don't know the limits of this system, the universe, this universe we know. If we use this theory of multiverse theory, the probability that there are different universes out there, and but we are seeing only this one, the one that we actually see. So this de definition won't be true. It seems like uh, I read it recently, uh, a group of scientists discovered that this universe is leaking in or out some particles probably from a parallel universe. So you see now, if there's a leaking here of kind of matter of energy with another unseen parallel universe, so this definition of isolated won't be true. However, we can have, we want to have sometimes those isolated systems in the lab and we try to copy that behavior, making uh, like for example, calorimeters it uses isolated uh, and use the quotation marks. Or thermos, the thermos that we use now to go to the beach to keep things cool. Sometimes we want to keep the coffee hot longer time, we isolate this container 
special isolation, sometimes vacuum, vacuum wall, glass, different isolation materials to keep, trying to keep the energy inside. And of course, matter. Well, we keep this closed. Trying to copy the isolation system, isolated system. They are now 100% efficient. Um, this is the base cam set for calorimeters and thermos. All right, so here is a review. This is a review of definition of systems and uh, different types of systems. Now I go back to the definition of equilibrium. We say uh, chemical equilibrium is the state of dynamic, always moving, always working equilibrium that occurs necessarily in a closed system. This type of systems here, closed system. All right, let's continue. And that occurs, and that dynamic equilibrium occurs when and only when the forward and reverse reaction of a reversible reaction occur at the same time, at the same rate. What is that? That means we must have a situation like this. Let me write a uh, generic. equation. I write generic equations like A plus B to form C plus D. We need to balance this generic equation. A, B, C, and D represents any chemical. This is just a generic equation that represents the reaction of A and B reactants to form C and D. Again, A, B, C, and D can represent any chemical compound in a particular chemical reaction. So we need to balance that. How do we balance that? Using stoichiometric coefficients. So I'm going to use the stoichiometric coefficient A, stoichiometric coefficient B, stoichiometric coefficient C using lowercase, and stoichiometric coefficient D. So now we have a balanced chemical equation. We can have two different situations. What happened here with my D? Let's write again, D. Okay, it's there. We can have two different situations. Let me copy that again. Here. A plus B to 
to form C plus D. We again balance those using the stoichiometric coefficients A, B, C, and D. What two different situations we can have? Scenario one. The reaction goes only in one direction, like this one. You see the arrow is showing as the reaction, the direction of the reaction as it is written. The equation is written that way, A plus B forming C and D. Those are the reactives, these are the products. So the equation as it is written, this is very important. As it is Written. That means that way, showing this direction. Very important. We used to repeat this many times. So that means the way you see the equation on your paper or on the board. That direction shows A reacting with B forming C and D. This particular case, case one, shows that this reaction goes in only one direction, from left to right, from left to right. These type of reactions are very common in, in nature, goes to completion. Yeah. Right. Has some delay here when it's, it's writing. All right. This reaction goes to completion. Goes to completion. That means it will go all the way down to make products until this this are gone, or at least one of them is gone, limiting reactive. It will go all the way down until one of the reactives or both run off. This type of reaction is are usually very spontaneous in the nature. Once they started, it continue to make products until all the reactives finished. They are spontaneous, they goes to completion, goes in only one direction. In general, we can say that these reactions do not reach the equilibrium because usually they are uh, fast, relatively, depending on certain conditions and depending on the reactivity of materials, they go only, goes only one way.
the driving force here is very strong so make the reaction go, to go in that direction of making products one example of this type of reaction is the combustion combustion reaction combust combustion reactions where a combustion of organic materials like for example ch3 ch4 methane gas plus o2 gas forms co2 gas plus h2o gas plus obviously heat energy this is methane natural gas the gas used for cooking at homes or another example is propane the, the one that, that you buy in cylinders to put on the grill that's propane organic material hydrocarbon that burns in the presence of oxygen all combustions reactions combustion of organic material forms co2 and water and heat I leave it as a homework balance these two reactions Oh my. CH4 gas plus O2. Finish this. This is the one here. And this one. Propane. C3 H. Eight gas plus O2, finish it and balance. This is natural gas cooking at home, is being delivered through pipes from the street, and this is propane gas, the one you buy on a cylinder is sold as liquefied liquefy propane anyway look what happened when, when you are combusting this gas it burns out all the way down those are, this is the drive, two very good driving forces, pushing the reaction to go to the right. Formation of a gas, formation of water. Very good driving force, pulling this reaction to the right. It goes to the completion. Once you start burning the gas, it will go by itself all the way down until the gas is gone. This doesn't want to 
establish the equilibrium because he, he wants to go to make products. The second type of uh, situation we can face is when we have a reaction that goes in one direction, but also at the same time goes in the opposite direction, in the reverse reaction. Reverse reaction. So we call this the forward reaction as it is written, that's the forward. That means A reacting with B to make C and D. That's the forward, as it is written. At the same time, also, C, compound C and compound D react together to form A and B. So this is the reverse direction or reverse reaction. And we can recognize this type of reactions when we see the double arrow and they are called reversible. reactions, I forgot the X, reactions, reversible reactions. That's my shortcut for reactions. So whenever you see this, we're talking about reactions. Here, combustion reactions. They are reversible and you recognize a reversible reaction when you see the double arrow. So depending on what you have, reaction that goes to completion shows only one direction. Of course, you can reverse this, right? Just by putting the opposite but that's not what naturally occurs. When you burn a piece of paper, there's a combustion and it will burn until all the paper is gone in presence of oxygen. To form what? Ashes. CO2 and water, and heat. Can you put these pieces together to form the paper back? Can you put the ashes together, collect the, the CO2 release and the water vapor release and the heat release together and make the paper again? If you say you can do it, I want to see it. I want to see it, I've never seen it. And I don't think that's going to occur, not on this universe. Following the laws of physics of this universe, the tendency of this universe, is not going to occur. Because it's not a reversible reaction Combustions are not reversible reactions. You cannot put this together to, to make uh, CO2. To, well, actually, this, on this particular, you, you can, you can, it's possible, but it's not natural. It's not spontaneous. You have to put a lot of energy. You have to go through different steps. In theory, it will be possible, but naturally, it's not. It's not going to occur naturally. It's not reversible. That's why we write it only one direction that way. 
However, this type of reactions, when you see the double arrow, you say they are reversible reactions. That means A plus B make C and D, and at the same time, and at the same speed, C and D makes A and B. Here we are. This is the definition of chemical equilibrium. That's exactly what we mean when we talk about chemical equilibrium. Look, it's the state of dynamic equilibrium that occurs in a closed system when forward and reverse reactions of a reversible reaction occur at the same rate. One real example of that. We have many, many cases and we are going to study many reversible reactions, many equilibrium situations, chemical equilibrium situations during the whole course. Let me give you one example of that. Hydrogen gas reacts with iodine. This is solid. Well, let's vaporize this to have everything in gas phase. Let's vaporize that. Establishes equilibrium establish the equilibrium to form two H I also gas hydrogen gas reacts with iodine gas to form hydrogen iodide gas. Notice here, double arrow is telling you we have a reversible reaction and this reaction at some point will establish the equilibrium and that will depend on temperature. Temperature of the system will determine in one moment the system will reach the equilibrium. However, at any time, at any time, since the equilibrium is dynamic, this is working all the time. At any time, you will find H hydrogen gas reacting with iodine to make hydrogen iodide. And at the same time, you will find hydrogen iodide decomposing into hydrogen um, iodine gas. This, the forward reaction, the forward reaction is a synthesis reaction the reverse reaction is a decomposition reaction. At any time, since this is a dynamic equilibrium, you will find the two processes happening at the same time. That's why we indicate using the double arrow. Sometimes we, we don't write the double arrow, just simply use the equal sign, but it's, it's the same meaning. Same meaning. But that's the part I'm really interested on making sure you understand this whole concept of equilibrium. The forward reaction and the reverse reaction working all the time. 
this one and this one making this and at the same time this one breaking down back to the initial and again and again and again never stop that process never stop for a equilibrium that's what we call it dynamic equilibrium never stop It doesn't mean the system is at equilibrium. We have a dynamic situation, but we call it equilibrium. We say the system is at equilibrium only and only when the speed of the forward reaction equals the speed of the reverse reaction. When the forward reaction has the same rate as the reverse reaction. Both occurs at the same rate, these two rates. Initially, probably, when you place in a container, you place H2. You pump hydrogen gas and then you pump into the system iodine gas. Remember, it has to be that's one condition. It's a closed system. Once you pump in the material, you know exactly how many moles. Let's say it will work with stoichiometric amounts, and this is one liter container. And we add one more of this and one more of the second in one liter. Then we have molar concentrations of both. What is the molar concentration of H2 in that case? We use, and this is chemistry notation, a square brackets to represent molar concentration. So that means that's molarity. Mol molarity, as you can remember, is number of moles of solute over total volume in liters. Volume in liters. So molar concentration of H2 is the number of moles of number of moles of H2. This is H. Number of moles of H2 over total volume will be obviously one over one. One mole over one liter. So the molar concentration is one molar capital M, or you can say one mole per liter, one mole per liter. That's the molar concentration of H2. And what is the molar concentration of iodine? I2, same. The molar concentration of I2 is one mole per liter. One mole in one liter container. Or you can say just one molar. When you see only one significant figure because I, I enter only one significant figure. If I use 1.0, to make more increase the precision of the measurement. So here I will have 1.0 molar, more precise. 1.0 moles, so the answer will be 1.0 molar. 
if I use here, if I say I place in 1.0 0 moles, that means you are measuring more precisely the mass of this one mole, then the molar concentration will be 1.00 molar. Have to be careful with this. Following the significant figures, we apply significant figures. You learn significant figures in Chem 100, and then you review that and apply that in Chem 11, and we still have to use these rules. Significant figures and scientific notation rules. So you see how to describe the concentration of this. Anyway, if we place th these amounts of reactives into that closed system, once you initially, once you put it there, how much of HI is in the system? Nothing. You just place them together. They haven't started to react. They are waiting for your order. They're waiting for your command to start reacting. But there's nothing of HI. So at the beginning, only these are present. And once you say, OK, guys, start. So the reaction will go that direction, making the new HI, few molecules the first time. So. Few seconds later, depending on the speed of the reaction, few seconds later, you will start seeing the formation of the new gas, HI. We have, in chemistry, we have ways to detect the presence of this. There are many different ways. So we know exactly when the new compound is being formed. So initially you have a lot of this, one mole, one mole, and initially zero, initially is zero. Once the reaction starts, this, the concentration of this, concentration of HI will start to go up slowly. Or faster, I don't know what is the speed of this reaction, depending on how reactive are those. Probably they will go fast. So in order for this to go up, as this is going up, this is start going down, concentration of this start going down, and concentration of this starts going down. So this starts to increase, this starts to decrease the concentrations. So notice that initially, you have this right here, initial concentration is, we say is one molar, <coughs> sorry. one molar, and here one molar. I'm going to use only one significant figure. And the initial concentration is zero, initially. When you give the command, start working, something is going to occur, a change. Concentrations will change. Let's write the change in blue. Yeah. The change will occur. The change, that means concentration of H2 will start, start to go down. This starts to go down. Why? Because they are working, they are reacting to make the new product. So this concentrations react and their concentrations goes down. 
So since the, the reaction is going to the right, this concentration is going to go down by minus X amount per mole. That depends on the stoichiometric coefficient. Here is one, so minus X. If the coefficient was two, so it's going to go by minus two X down. If the coefficient was three, so the change will be minus three X. Start to do this. What about the change for I2? Same, same thing, it's going to go down because it's being consumed to make the new stuff. That's why it's going down because it's being consumed. Since this concentration is going down, it's going to be minus, in this case, X. By the change, it's going to be minus X amount of the initial. And it's going to make how much of this? The change for the change, how much of this? 2x, yes, 2x, 2 for stoichiometric coefficient, two times the amount. And it's going to be positive because it's making, remember, the sign depends on the direction. If you are going this direction, this being consumed to make this, so being consumed is negative, being form is positive. The change depends on the stoichiometric coefficient. X is a number, the change number during the process, and we can find it. There are mathematical ways to find that out. So what happened next? The next is the equilibrium. We are going to write here E for equilibrium. At equilibrium, oh, before the equilibrium, remember here, this is working to make the new product. Initially, the reaction is mainly going forward to the forward direction from left to right. At the moment that you have the first molecules of HI form, then they will start to go back. So initially, probably you have very little of the reverse reaction because remember this is increasing, 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 this going down, this is increasing, going down, going down, increasing. And once you have the first molecules of this, spontaneously, because that's the nature of this reaction, which is reversible, this will start to break down into the initial compounds. So it becomes more important as time goes, increasing, increasing. Now the speed of the forward reaction to, starts to slow down. Why? Because this is almost consumed. It's not totally consumed, it's almost consumed. And the reverse reaction starts to gain speed. Until both the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. You say here, rate 
of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. When the system reaches to this point where the rate of the forward reaction equals is exactly the same as the rate of the reverse reaction, now the system is at equilibrium and only now, not before. Before it's working dy dynamically to reach the equilibrium. Once the equilibrium is established at that temperature, it's temperature dependent, temperature dependent. Now we can call it at the equilibrium. So the system will be at equilibrium and both speeds occurs at the same rate. And we can find the equilibrium concentrations. So that will be one minus X, the initial minus the change here. And here, the initial minus the change, that will be the equilibrium concentration. And here, the equilibrium concentration for this one will be zero. Initially, there was nothing plus 2x. In other words, it's 2x. That's the critical thinking we do when we have a equilibrium situation and we just elaborated something very useful that is called the ice table. It stands for initial concentration, the change of concentration, trying to reach the equilibrium, and the equilibrium concentration once the equilibrium has been established at that temperature T. What happens once the system reaches the equilibrium? From that moment on, wherever this concentration is, wherever this concentration is, wherever this concentration is, they will remain constant. Concentrations will remain constant at equilibrium. Common misconception. Some students think that is the same as remain equal. I'm not saying the concentration remain equal. No, wrong. It's a misconception. They do not remain equal they remain constant, it's two different things. For example, I'm just going to throw numbers. Let's say if at the equilibrium is found that the equilibrium concentration of this is 0.1, uh, this can be point, uh, point 0.3, and this one to say uh, a number 0.5. So at the equilibrium was found these equilibrium concentrations. With this concentration, the system reached the equilibrium. Once the system is at the equilibrium, this concentration will remain constant. Notice that they are no equal. However, they will remain constant. You can do anything here. Once the system is at the equilibrium, you can change concentrations, you can change the pressure, you can do things. You can add this, you can take out this, you can add more of this. The system will try to reach the equilibrium again and this concentration will show up again. They will remain constant at that temperature as long as you don't, you don't change the concentration, sorry, the temperature. Remember, the equilibrium is a temperature dependent. 
what happens when you change the temperature? The te if you change the temperature, then you don't have this equilibrium anymore. However, the, since this is a reversible reaction, the system will work dynamically going forward, going to the forward, going to the right, or going to the left, to the left, to the left, to the right, until the system reaches a new equilibrium at the new temperature. And probably the equilibrium concentration will be different than this. Again, once the equilibrium is reached at the new temperature, concentration will remain constant, the new equilibrium concentrations. That is the concept of chemical equilibrium. You see, I spend a good amount of time analyzing and doing critical thinking on a simple definition. I hope this helps you to really understand what is the meaning of chemical equilibrium. Everything has been summarized here. And uh, if you really understand this, you can stop the video and watch it again, watch it. Go through all the process I'm doing because you won't find this on the textbook. Do it a couple of times until it becomes second nature and you understand what is equilibrium and how to work with the ice table. Initial change equilibrium table. If you do that right and fully understand this, your life will be a lot easier during the rest of the semester. I don't need to stop here because I did already. I explained that already. However, if I skip slides because I did already, I explained them already, uh, you should not skip it. All right, just stop the video, read again. If you notice that something is uh, not clear, just go back to what I said. This one is a graph of concentration against time and shows the behavior of chemical equilibrium. We use, in chemistry, we use graphs to represent certain behaviors. It is very important to understand and to learn how to analyze graphs. So I, uh, I will go through this one to help you to understand what is the meaning of this graph. So it's, it's going to be an application of what you, I just did. Exactly the same, but I'm going to use, we are going to use here a different reaction. This is one of the reactions mentioned in the, in the lab, the first lab. Is the reaction between, um, let's use, I think it's rainbow. Let's use brown. Because uh, that gas goes from brown to colorless into
O4 gas to form NO2, to NO2 gas. So we have initially a container, remember close container, initially with NO2, N2O4 gas initially, N2O4 gas. So we have the initial amount of this. Let's say this is one liter container and we added 1.0 moles of that, 1.0 moles. This is 1.0 moles. My eraser is not working properly or, oh, now it's working. Okay, one more. How much of this NO2 is there initially? Nothing, nothing. So we write the ice table there It's better when we write this table right beneath the right beneath the equation. Yes, oh, I'm happy now because I can erase. Let's write this table. Okay. So let's write. I stable there. And we added uh, 1.0 mole, 0 mole for that initially. So initial concentration will be one mole per liter. Since this, the I stable represents molar concentrations. We don't need to write the, the, the concentrations. To simplify the work and you say, okay, so the initial concentration of this is 1.0. However, you need to use the proper number of significant figures, mole per liter. What is the initial concentration of this? Zero. and it's ready for your command. Once you say one, two, three, go, start to react. In this case, what type of reaction is this? N2O4 forming 2NO2. What do you say? What type of reaction is this? Is this a synthesis reaction or decomposition reaction, the forward reaction? The one is shown here as it is written. Yes, it's a decomposition. The big molecule is breaking down into two pieces. So it's a decomposition reaction. So you say one, two, three, go. This starts to break down to make those and the first molecules start to show up here. So in order to happen, to, for that to happen, let's say here, this is the initial concentration. Let's say this is 1.0 moles per liter, 
right? In the, in the units here are molar concentrations, so that will be 1.0 moles per liter. Initial and what is the initial concentration of NO2 here? Zero. At time zero. This is time zero and zero concentration. Yeah. So that's initial. Right here. Initial. In your equation. Nothing of NO2. You say start, then this start to May, this is going to be consume because it's breaking down and this start to increase. Consume, increase, consume, increase. So this concentration starts to go down and this concentration NO2 starts to go up here. Just look at the graph, going down, going up, going down, going up. Is making more NO2 and concentration of N2O4 starts to go down. By how much is going down? How much? What is the change? It's going to be, if you say minus X, you're right, because it's minus, it's going down, and this is only one stoichiometric change and how much this is start to make how much you say plus 2x yes you write two stoichiometric x amounts two times if this goes down by one time this is forming two times according with the stoichiometric relationship so that's the change. And, and this is down because it's being consumed, and this is plus because it's being formed. It's forming. Here, being consumed is double, 1M. Consume, well, uh, I have to check the spelling there. Uh, And this is being form, being form. So it goes up, being form, being consumed, negative. That's how you know uh, to write the signs on the change, depending on the direction of the reaction. Is the reaction, okay, so as, once this is formed, it starts the reaction it starts to go to the reverse rate. And the speed starts to increase because now we have more and more molecules of this. And this is start to, the speed of this starts to go down because now we have less and less and less amount of this until at some moment, at some point, both speeds equals. And now we have system at the equilibrium here right here at this moment at this particular moment for that particular reaction for that particular temperature look what happened with the concentration stop to go down it stops to go going down and this one stops to going up You see the big difference? That's an equilibrium situation. It's an equilibrium situation. So stop at the, this is equilibrium concentration for the reactive. So here at this point, it's going to show equilibrium concentration of N2 O4 at equilibrium here is showing this one here this point is showing concentration of n2 of four initial 
you see two different things initial here initial starts to work going down until it reaches the equilibrium now we have equilibrium concentration and we can say so far that the equilibrium concentration will be 1.0 minus x this is a mathematical representation that's why i'm using regular brackets and this is uh, the equilibrium concentration of this is going to be 2x. So you can say here, that that's the way we write it. Let's say this equilibrium concentration of N2 of 4 equals 1.0 minus 6. You see the difference when I'm using the square brackets and, and, and regular brackets. Here I'm saying this is molar concentration of N2O. So I'm using square brackets. How much is that? 1.0 minus X. This is a mathematical formula. Now I have I use regular brackets there. This is notation. All right. So yes, once the equilibrium is reached, equilibrium um, the concentrations remains constant. So what concentration is this? What concentration is this here? Yes. That will be the equilibrium concentration of NO2. Equilibrium. It's very important to identify that. Sometimes this is no ideal situation in a practical way in a production system. In a production system, you have NO2 and you want to make NO2. You have N2O4 and you want to have, you want to make NO2. You buy this, if you have a factory, if you are the owner of the factory, look, this is your factory. That is your factory, right? Your factory produces material. You buy, you buy N204, N204, that's your raw material. You buy very cheap. Very cheap. But you can make it very cheap and you transform in your industry, in your factory into NO2, nitrogen dioxide, gas. And you sell this at very good price. You make a good profit out of that. If we see it from that point of view, you don't like this. If you are the owner and you are the CEO of this company, you don't like that equilibrium situation that's going against your business. Why? Because the reaction is not going, it's not producing all what you want. In ideal situation, in a reaction that goes to completion, if the reaction goes only one way, like for example, uh, combustion, CH4 plus O2 to form CO2 plus water, plus water H2, Oh. 
plus heat Q. You place initially certain amount concentration of CH4. Reaction starts, combustion starts, and this reaction goes all the way down until the CO, CH4 is gone. And the products, this one, the products will start to form until the reaction finished. So this is concentration and this is time. This is your CH4 and this is these are the products. Let's say here you want to make uh, heat, right? Or this reaction or CO2 or water, who knows? I don't know what type of industry, how you make money from, from this business. We use this reaction to produce heat to cook our foods or to keep the house warm. Anyway, this look this behavior of a regular one direction reaction, the reaction that goes to completion, all the way up until all the CH4 is finished, zero here. Yeah. That's the ideal situation on a business, from the business point of view. However, the real life and nature doesn't care about your business doesn't care about what you think. That's the way it behaves. For this reaction, this particular, which establishes the equilibrium, this is the way it behaves. You want to, you wish that all the reactives you put here is converted into this, so you make more money, but that's not going to happen. Some portion will remain unreacted. All this amount of N204 will remain unreacted, and you will make only this amount of the product. That's why it's very important to come to this class if this person here, if the owner of this company didn't take the Chem 12 class at Kingsborough Community College, this person will not know about the equilibrium situation. And this person will buy more and more and will stack a lot of this, hoping to get this more. And that is not going to happen in the normal conditions because this person doesn't understand the equilibrium, doesn't understand that the reaction will not go to completion and at some point will reach the equilibrium and no for change will occur simply because there is a reverse reaction running at the same speed against your wish, against your will. If this person came to Kingsboro to take the Chem 12 class, will understand this and will make adjustments to manipulate the equilibrium, to shift the equilibrium to the direction the person needs. And that's what we learn, I'm going to show you later 
the something that we call the Le Chatelier's principle. And that's what we were doing during the first lab, application of Le Chatelier's principle to shift the equilibrium to the right or to the left. In this case, if you know this Le Chatelier's principle, how to apply the Le, Chatelier, Le Chatelier's principle in a equilibrium process, you can play with this and shift the reaction to the right to make effectively more NO2. I'll show you how to do that. And you will make more profits out of your company. And I'm not claiming any percentage of your profits. You are entitled to use this knowledge to your own benefit. So that's how you analyze this uh, type of graphs. And the next one shows the equilibrium between N2O4 and NO2 at molecular level. So to show that this is a decomposition reaction. It breaks down into two small. So this direction from top to bottom or from left to right is a decomposition and the reverse reaction is the synthesis. And both are occurring, since we have a double arrow here to show equilibrium, they are both occurring at the same time. And at the equilibrium, the speed of the forward reaction equals the speed of the reverse reaction. Since this is a dynamic situation, this will break down into this and then they will decide to go back to one. They hesitate all the time. So the big molecule, this big molecule says, oh, I want to split. They split. And then a few seconds later or milliseconds, they say, oh, you know, you know what? Let's go back together. And then a few milliseconds later, oh, let's split. I don't like you. And then a few milliseconds, you know what? I need you. Let's go back. Back and forth all the time, never stop, never stop doing that. I don't know how they manage, but they never stop. That's an equilibrium situation. And if we understand this at molecular level, will be good for the rest of the semester. This is the molecule, a molecular level representation of the graph. Initially, look the amounts, we put into the system of N2O4, everything is N2O4. There's nothing of NO2. So let's start from the left. This one is very important to show one very another particular case of chemical equilibrium. For the equilibrium N2, O4, gas, with two NO2 gas, we know this is a reversible reaction and it can reach the equilibrium. This is the point. The equilibrium can be reached from any position. It's very important comes. The equilibrium can be reached from any position. That means you can start from this side 
and the reaction will go to the right until it reaches the equilibrium. Like on this case, this representation here, you add initially zero point, initially, this is ice, in one liter container, this is one, look, this is one liter container, we add initially zero point zero three fifty moles of N two O four. And you say go. What is the change? It's going to occur while this is working. Going forward. It's going to be minus X to form 2x. And at the equilibrium is found that once the, 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 the equilibrium is reached, the analysis was made in the mixture to find how much of this is and how much of this is at the equilibrium and they found zero point 0.292 moles of N2O4 and 0 0.0116 moles of NO2 at the equilibrium. Start starting the reaction from here, from left to right, because you added only this, there was nothing of this. Initially, there's nothing in this. So we say the po you start the equilibrium from this position here. It's like, uh, I, I sometimes I like to compare that to a scale to balance. Where is my drawing? Just this, oh, here is. Um, let's, let's put the fulcrum here. Pivot point there. So you put some material here and nothing there, so it's unbalanced. Then this one starts to bang consume, bang form, and it starts to slowly well, the word is slowly, I should not say that. Because it depends on the nature of the reactor. Some react, reactions goes very fast. Some, some of them goes um, very slow, but eventually they will reach the equilibrium in the same way. Uh, so it will go slowly until the system reaches the equilibrium here. I keep saying it slowly, I should not say that. It will go in that direction, in this case, to the left, to the, uh, from left to right to reach the equilibrium. This is a physical equilibrium. And this, since this is a physical equilibrium, this is not going to happen spontaneously. This physical equilibrium, the, like a seesaw equilibrium, this machine is governed by laws of physics. And here gravity is working, mainly gravity resistance etc. But that process is not spontaneous. That's another big difference of, with chemical equilibrium. Yeah? This is, we call this physical equilibrium. It's not chemical.
physical equilibrium. All right. It doesn't work naturally. You need an external unbalanced force to break this situation, to bring it up to equilibrium. This is unbalanced, so you need another unbalanced force to bring it to the equilibrium. Like for example, you need to add more masses here, more weight, until the system is at uh, the real equilibrium, physical equilibrium. So you see you need an, an external uh, unbalanced force. Otherwise, that physical equilibrium will stay there forever, according with the first law, Newton's first law, the law of inertia. It will stay for the, forever like that. However, in a chemical equilibrium, there's a natural tendency to establish the equilibrium at certain temperature. You put this initial amount, and naturally, spontaneously, it will work to form the product, if you have the correct thermodynamic conditions. This will form the product until the system reaches by itself the equilibrium. And this, this is the equilibrium concentrations found there, right there. It was measured, this is a, a experimental result. Can you find from here what, is, what was the value of X? What was the change? Since the equilibrium concentration is 0 0.0350 minus X, and that number is this one equals that. So yes, you can find X, just subtract from here right if you move this around then you will find that x the value of that change is actually 0 0.0350 minus 0 0.0292 and you you know the number that change and you, you do the calculation, the formation of this the change is 2x, two times this value here of x, that should be this one. All right. This is just extra analysis I'm throwing here because this type of analysis is useful to solve problems. So notice that the equilibrium was rich starting from here, from this side, going to, to the right. However, in this experiment, they decided to start the equilibrium from a different position, from from the right. So here we have N2 of four gas in equilibrium with two NO2 gas. So they, in um, the second experiment to demonstrate this behavior of equilibrium, they added initially, look the arrows here, Initially, they added, not here, but here, they added 0 0.0700 moles per liter. And that's the initial. Amount of NO2, nothing here. So initially there's nothing here, just here. 
Initially, the, the main reaction will be the reverse reaction. Here, initially, the, the main reaction will be the forward reaction because this amount of this to make that one. Here, this amount of this to make that one. Here, this is the reactive, this is the product. In the second situation, this is the reactive and this is the product. This is going to be consumed and this is going to be formed. Here, being this is going to be consumed Consume. I still have the question I, uh, how to spell consume. This is one M or double M. Let me find that out. One M. Just one M. So this is going to be consume. And this is being form. This is forming. In the second situation, this is what is going to be consumed. And is this is forming? Is being formed. That is important. That direction is important to know because that will tell you the sign of your X. By how much this is going to be consumed during the change? It's going to be consumed by minus two X amount, stoichiometrically. And how much is going to form of this? It's going to make plus X amount. You see, the sign, you assign. I couldn't find my class. Uh, that was Siri. She's listening to the, our conversation. All right. I just lost my my pen. Oh, here it is. So once once you know what is the position you are starting with, you can figure what is the sign of this. You assign the signs during the change. At the equilibrium, it was found, the equilibrium concentration, you start using this amount. And look, look here in the first case, they started with different amount of N2O4. Here, using a different amount, in this case of NO2 initially. They let it go, wait, until the system reaches the equilibrium by itself, because this is a spontaneous process. Once the equilibrium is reached, they do analysis of the mixture, N2O4, NO2, to figure what is the concentration at the equilibrium. Remember, this concentration remains constant. So you can take sample at any time. Being careful, because if you open the system, the, 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 the equilibrium will shift. All right, they found the equilibrium concentration for the second case was 0 0.0292 and 0 0.0116. Guess what? Look, exactly the same thing. That proves what? 
the equilibrium can reach from any position, from right to left or from left to right. In this case, this reaction is going, is going from right to left. This reaction was going from right to left. The first reaction was going from left to right until it reaches the equilibrium. So initially, the main, react, the main reaction goes to the left, shifting to the left. We, we use that word, we're going to use that word very often. The reaction starts to shift to the right to reach the equilibrium. Here we say the reaction, the reaction, the reaction shift to the left to reach the equilibrium. It's important that you learn how to explain the process properly using the right words, the right expression. So in chemistry, that's, that's the way we explain it. That's the way we say it. The reaction shift to the left, from left to right, sorry, from right to left until it reaches the equilibrium. In the first case, the reaction shifts to the right because that's what you have initial amount here. So the main reaction is this, to the right. So the re reaction shifts, the reaction shifts to the right to reach the equilibrium. I'll show you a few uh, tricks to figure in what direction the, re the, the reaction will shift. Because not always we know that. Let's say if you add equal amounts of materials here and there, How do you know in what direction will shift to, the, to, to reach the equilibrium? You add at the same time this amount, a, a, x amount of this and x amount of that. Let's say you add uh, 0.5 moles of this and 0.5 moles of that. Do you know what direction will shift to the right or to the left to reach the equilibrium? No, we don't know. There are tools and I'll show you these tools to figure that out. And that tool, I can give you a hint right now, is called the reaction quotient. All right. This is another uh, reaction. This is the one I was using before, the reaction between hydrogen gas and hydrogen and, and iodide gas to form hydrogen iodide. I'm going to stop here. I don't want to make the recording too long. Otherwise I will have problem posting it uh, on the Blackboard. So I'm going to stop here and I will continue. This is slide number seven. I will start from here in the next recording. So I'll see you uh, in the next one.